Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, creativity, and passion. Thank you so much for watching today. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, we're going to be celebrating Valentine's Day by creating a mini video series called Let's Talk About Love. And we're going to be exploring different aspects of love, exploring different areas of love through poets and poetry. Today, we have a guest poet who's going to explore romantic love. And this is her second appearance on Art and Talk. So we're so excited to reconnect with her. Please stay connected with us on our Facebook page, Art and Talk, and on our YouTube channel, Art and Talk. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk, and I'd like to welcome our guest poet to help us celebrate Valentine's Day, Mona Lisa Aspiris. Welcome, Mona Lisa, again. So great to see you. Hi, Leslie Sue. It's a pleasure to see you again, and I'm very happy that you have been able to accommodate me. And um, if you, with your permission, I can now start reading my poem. Yes, absolutely, please. Okay. My poem is called Ode to My Best Friend. Ode to my best friend. In many ways, you're a mystery. Out of the blue, you came to me and reached out your hand, lifting me from the clumsy waters of my life. Sometimes when we speak, I feel and see butterflies in between and around us. They carry messages of sweet nothings, of love and grace, humor and life. Why did you choose me? Why did I choose you? If a delusion, this one is rare, if you're meant to be with me. Won't you, ride, won't you ride my sailboat with me in the undecided waters of my faith? Or shall I hop into yours? and make your boat my home. Each day is a blessing to have known you in the past and a promise to the future, however it may pass, for I will at least be graced to have crossed paths with you. So here's to the intertwining of our lives. Thank you for being you, my friend. Love always. That's beautiful. Basically. Yes. Thank you, Leslie Sue. So when I wrote this poem, uh, Ode to My Best Friend, I had written it after I had met um, my ex-boyfriend called William, and it was called originally Ode to William. I had a very nice relationship with him. And even after we broke up, we actually broke up. I'm not um, his boy or his girlfriend anymore we actually became friends and um, it was very nice his relationship both with me as a boyfriend and as my friend and um, I must say that actually what happened was that after we became friends something happened so we're not friends anymore but uh, that's why I changed the title from O to William to O to my best friend because I wanted to generalize this poem and the concept of love to make it seem like love is general and love is all encompassing. And love is not only a romantic love, which is originally was meant to be here, but also uh, love is for a friend, your best friend could be for your family, uh, for a platonic love, or basically um, I thought, um, it would be best if I put this all to my best friend because for me also friendship is enduring and um, when uh, when one is friends with someone usually or lovers or you know partner or family um, you always have space in your heart like a door is always open in your heart for them mm -hmm. so that's how I felt that this poem is dedicated to all types of love, whether lovers or the love for a family, a family that has one for each other, or a love that a friend has for another friend. So 
it's an all type of encompassing love. And I, at the time when I wrote this poem, O to William or O to my best friend, I had really uh, been in the throes of romantic love. <laughs> so, uh, for example, when I say, sometimes when we speak, I feel and see butterflies. There's that ever, you know, uh, ever existing feeling of having butterflies in your stomach when you have this romantic love for someone. Mm -hmm. And won't you ride my sailboat with me in the undecided waters of my fate? Or shall I hop into yours and make your boat my home? So each day is a blessing to have known you in the past and a promise to the future. So here is to the intertwining of our lives. Thank you for being you, my friend. And I also like how I ended the poem when I said love always. So it's a tribute to love because... Mm -hmm. Love is all encompassing. Love is a gift of God. Love is a creation of God and love is life. So therefore, love always. So a toast to love. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. A toast to love. I love your elaboration, Mona Lisa. So you really have taken us where um, from romantic love, um, where initially that was like you, you, as you said, your kind of state of of how you felt um, with this person. But it also is also the the transitions of love because this uh, particular love um, things started to change, and then um, you weren't together, then you were friends, and then you weren't friends. So it kind of moves us into the the weavings of love and and how things kind of a, a appear to change. And then I I kind of feel that the overlighting. Um, theme here is unconditional love because um, you've really helped to highlight love always like how you ended your beautiful poem because love always unconditional love as you said it could be platonic it could be lovers it could be romantic it could be a sister it could be you know family it, it could be any type of love so you you really helped us to kind of explore through your poem unconditional love and and also the reference of it to being a divine love as well I like the fact that you uh, have emphasized this um, all-encompassing um, feature of love, that love is present everywhere. It could be, as you said, as I mentioned, and as you also reiterated, platonic love, uh, love for a romantic love, love for the family, love for friends which uh, they have for each other. And... Um, uh, love also has this quality of being mysterious because sometimes it just appears in your life when you least expect it. And I open this poem by saying, in many ways, you're a mystery. Out of the blue, you came to me and reached out your hand, lifting me from the clumsy waters of my life. So in that sense, love uh, sometimes appears when you least expect it. And when you're... Um, as I mentioned here, lifting me from the clumsy waters of my life. You have this image of the, um, uh, your lover or your partner or your friend reaching out his hand, reaching out his hand and you clasping his hand or her hand, you know, for, uh, for reaching out for his, his love. So, and this love is, you know, unexpected, it will come Sometimes when you least expect it, you know, and you're, gra you're <laughs> sort of uh, drowning in your own life, life's problems or something, or when you least expect it, and then God throws you a lifeline in the form of this person mm -hmm. who loves you. And, and then you just grow, you know, because that's the way life is, that um, relationships come and go. Some relationships come, some relationships stay some relationships you know uh, leave but um this is um me analyzing and sort of celebrating this re particular relationship because it made me grow and it made me who i am now mm -hmm. so this is all a life experience so love always makes you grow and for the better or for the worse it always 
-hmm. It's a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. You brought up so many interesting points, Mona Lisa, and helping us explore uh, some different areas of love. And I love your symbology and, and also your explanations and, and your beautiful insight. So um, as we're going to close out our Valentine's Day um, special, let's talk about love. I'd like for you to just give us off the top of your head, off the cuff, Mona Lisa, what are three words to you that embody love? I would say life, um, laughter, and hunger, maybe. Uh, hunger, I would equivalent, I would uh, make it equivalent to passion, maybe hunger for life, for this uh, passion and life because it's without love, you know, it, love makes a world go round. And the other one I said was laughter because laughter is the best medicine and life, love and laughter are, are go well together, I think. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much, Mona Lisa. Thank you for being one of our guest poets for our Valentine's Day reading. And we wish you much success. Thank you. And happy Valentine's Day to you and yours. Happy Valentine's Day, Leslie. So appreciate so much. Thank you. You too, Mona Lisa. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching our mini video series on Let's Talk About Love to help us celebrate Valentine's Day and explore different areas of love. Thank you again, Mona Lisa, for being our guest poet to celebrate Valentine's Day. Be on the lookout for some of the other poets that will also be contributing to Let's Talk About Love. Thank you again for watching, and we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.